Hey you guys, I decided to pop in with a bit of a voiceover for this linear structure. So if you are interested in drawing linear structure, there is a few videos on my channel um, that can kind of catch you up with linear structure. So in this drawing, it's not a complete linear structure. Um, I have a very basic composition um, and also my objects are very basic. So it's not much structure that I have to get down. Um, but if you're interested in in that just look at some of those past videos and you can catch up but in this video um, I'm starting with a ellipse so I'm starting with an actual box for my lips so I can get my lips a bit accurate in space um, and then I come in with just quick structure uh, for completing that cylinder cylinder <laughs> it's not a cylinder cone <laughs> for completing the cone you guys so I'm drawing a line from the center of that box um, so I can get at least where the peak of the cone is um, and then I'm just connecting the sides to the side of the ellipse so you guys it's just very quick linear structure um, I don't want to spend too much time on talking about this because pretty much if you no linear structure especially um taught by me you kind of know what my next few steps um the only thing that i don't 100 percent do is measure i do measure using basically relationships the relationship between the the cone as well as the relationship between um the cone and the the cube and just to make sure i have the right height of the cone and the right height of the cube um, I probably should have measured in my sphere. Um, my pink sphere, you guys, I feel like could have been a bit taller than what I drew it. But you get the idea of what the first step is, and that's just basically linear structure. I will pop in on the second clip when I start my underpainting. Hope you enjoy. Bye, you guys.
Hey everyone, so I am back in the second clip. So you guys, this is the underpainting stage. So once you are done with your little structure, you want to get in a, at least map out uh, your light mass and your dark mass. So if you're just like, Jerry, what is a light mass and a dark mass? Um, once again, there are videos on my channel that go to over rendering, um, but just quickly in this video, what I am doing is I am linearly just separating what's in my light family and what's in my dark family. Um, so if you're like, what is a light family and dark family? Um, the light family, or at least my light mass, is where the objects are getting the most light. Um, my shadow mass is where the object and also my cast shadow isn't receiving light. So I'm going through all of my objects and I'm separating the light part of the objects from the dark part of the objects. So I'm doing this linear to start with because I want to make sure I'm mapping my shadow shapes properly before I start the underpainting process. And the underpainting process, you guys, is pretty much I'm going to use a 45 degree hatching mark to block out my shadow family in our shadow mask so you will see that um once i get there so all of these objects are or at least my shadow mask is going to be one continuous shape the shadow side of the objects and also the cast shadow is going to be one continuous shape so when it comes to the underpainting process for me with my color pencils i like to establish um at least how light hits on these objects in my composition um, and you're probably wondering like jury why are you using <laughs> a blue pencil the reason why I'm using a blue pencil because in this under under painting stage um, I want to establish the temperature of my light my light in my photo is a warm light so that means that my shadows in my cast shadow is going to be cool they're going to be cool um, pretty much shadows so it's it's the opposite of you have a cool light that means you're going to have um warm shadows and also warm cast shadows so it's just temperature so what i'm doing in this underpainting not only am i establishing how light is illuminating in this composition but i'm also or basically just my separation of light part and dark part but i'm also um want to make sure that i'm establishing the temperature of my light um so you don't want to have a heavy um, layer of this blue uh, a light layer would do you don't want it too light but you also don't want it too heavy um, because you still want to make sure you have enough room um, and you don't want to at least fill up the paper is what I'm trying to say you can easily fill up the grain of the paper with color pencils and you don't want to um, do that too fast too soon you want to take your time building up because we still have a lot of color that we have to um, put it into our shadow mask as well as our light mask so a nice little thin layer is fine and you know this blue is going to affect whatever color we put on top of it so it's a good thing so once again this is the under painting stage this is step 1a <laughs> and you guys i meant to say this in the last clip but um excuse my camera from uh the focus it is trying to focus in and out I am going to be completely honest, I was being very, very lazy and I just did not, I just did not want to fix it and I just, you know, recorded myself in auto the whole time. <laughs> I know that's, you know, bad videographer, bad person, Jerry, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, it's not that bad. We get through it, we see it, we just got to focus in and out every time it's trying to focus. Um, but hopefully this step helps um, for this underpainting stage. Like I said, um, pretty much a lot of my newer videos, uh, pretty much after, or you can say, this series of videos that I'm coming out with, um, just about all of my process is going to have an underpainting when it comes to drawing and color. Um, so just stay tuned with that. Alright guys, I've done enough talking. Bye. <laughs>